Good morning, MacArthur. In today's program, Tia's Bike Charity, Mrs. World Australia, Councillor Borg on the Appen Road issue, 1816 Massacre Remembered, Rotary's Fashion for Charity, Tia Directs the Rock and more. Hi everyone, here I am in downtown Minto and today I have a young lady with me who started her own charity called Tell Tia for Charity. Nine-year-old Tia collects used bikes, fixes them up and gives them to kids who can't afford to buy new ones. So Tia, what made you start this charity off? Well, I was at my caravan park and I went up to the dump and I saw about three or four bikes down there and I said to my mum, can I um, take these bikes home? And my mum said, well, it's a bit too much to fit in our car. And so we started doing our own here. So you needed something more than just your car. Yeah. You probably needed like a van or something to be able to take the bikes home. Yeah. Right. So then how did you go about getting a van that'll help you take that around? Well, Minto on the go is helping us with our charity bikes. Mm -hmm. And one of my mum's friends is helping us as well. I came in contact with Tia's mum through various community groups and she told me about Tia's amazing idea and um, we've done a few things together. Uh, Minto on the go is a drop-off point for bike donations and um, we've got a few other projects in mind for some of the bikes that need a bit, little bit of love in future. Find them homes as well. <laughs> so when you find a couple of bikes, you take them home yeah. And what do you do then? Do you like fix them up, clean them and stuff? We fix them up and we clean them. My dad um, fixes them and he just needs to buy a few things to fix the bikes and then they're perfectly good. It's a project that we can all work together as a family and the community. Yeah. I clean them on the seats. I'm very proud. Um, it's been really good to see that she wants to pass on to kids um, donations that we've got and for her to know the value of you know just being kind to other people and if they don't have something try and help them get something if they can. Um, we need helpers for um, this <laughs> workshop we are doing to yeah, fix bikes. Children will be invited to come to the workshops, children who may not have a bike of their own and uh, volunteers will teach the kids how to maintain and take care of the bike themselves with uh, donated parts, chains, tyres, things like that that bikes may be missing. And at the end of the day the kids will go home with a new skill and their own bike. And don't forget everyone, it's Tell Tia for charity and it's a great cause and I hope she sticks with it. emotions are out here today. Uh, it's fantastic to be out here to commemorate the 200th anniversary uh, of the Appen Massacre. Um, but it's unfortunate that we have to be here in the first place. It was one of the darkest times in our nations, our states and indeed our region's history. Hey, Uncle Ivan, can you please tell us what is the, uh, the importance of remembering this massacre every year? Well, it's, it's, an, it's important to not only Indigenous people that uh, uh, lives on these lands, uh, they, they, they call it MacArthur, but the land itself, it, 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 it's named after the traditional owners, the Darawal people. And there's a sad history that uh, it hasn't been uh, uh, acknowledged and recognised and brought out and, and told. Well, the day means to me is that uh, we get recognition for um, things that happened in the past. I don't know if we can ever resolve them, but at least now there's transparency and people can make their own opinion of what happened in the past and how it affects people nowadays. That morning, 1am in the morning, uh, when Captain Wallace's men took out those 14 innocent people, including uh, women and children, was the beginning and part of something far greater and, uh, and tragic that occurred uh, in our history. It's so important that we don't forget and that we continue to tell the stories and listen to our elders so that we carry it through the generations so it can never be forgotten.
It means coming together as one. I think as Australians, we all need to recognise our history and, um, you know, and then we can move on. So do you also see it as a, a way to bring the whole community together? Well, that's what it's all about. It, 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 the, the gift of it is many cultures live on the land. And, it, it, and, and what pleases me, and, and I acknowledge this beautiful, is that the totem of these great people that was massacred is the lyrebird. And the lyrebird itself speaks many languages. It's, it's a bird of many languages, mocking, imitating, and, 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 and <laughs> making fun of other animals. Give us a brief idea of what the smoking ceremony is all about. The, the smoking ceremony to Angalaban, and I get this and I know this from my elders of, w of where I was born. It's all about calming the, the old people, the spirits of what happened to them, and letting them know that we're visiting their land and the place where it happened, and that for them to give us their blessing, to perform the ceremony, and all people that see her to have a pleasant day. Exquisite outfits from designer Tito Stowers Lavage Couture took the catwalk by storm last Saturday to raise funds for the Rotary Club of Campbelltown. It's the first time that we've had such events in our in our in the history of our club and I am so I'm so happy that we thought of having a fashion show. It's something really different. The entertaining evening was emceed by Julianne Horseman and Captain Pat. The Rotary Club of Campbelltown is a lot of great work. It's doing a lot of great work for the community in Australia and overseas. And last year, when uh, my friend Natalie says that she's the president of the Rotary Club, I say, oh, I'm going to leave that man out. All the performers donated their time and talent to the cause. Adding glamour to the evening was Mrs World Australia 2009 and Mrs Australia International 2010, Karen Hillman Farmer. Karen is one of the unforgettable faces of Peter's I'd Rather Go Naked Than Wear Fur campaign. Um, I was the face in 2011, just after Sophie Monk was their face in 2010. So um, that was really exciting, and I'm an avid animal rights activist. So um, it's always been part of my uh, part of my heart to look after animals. The one thing that's particularly um, strikes home with me more recently is breast cancer, because I just finalised treatment for breast cancer myself. I was diagnosed in November 2014, and um, I just finished my radiation therapy in October. I've done a lot of work with the McGrath Foundation and with Pink Hope, which have been um, amazing in supporting me as well. So shout out to Pink Hope. <laughs> All of me, John Legend. Gone with the wind. The on-screen chemistry between Clark Gable and Vivian Lee can be by anything. <laughs> Probably Sean Connery, because he reminds me of my dad. <laughs> uh, Angelina Jolie, definitely. Favourite Bollywood star? Which one? And on the matter of Appen Road, lots of hot air, no action. With me today is longtime Fix Appen Road campaigner, councillor Fred Borg. Appen Road, unfortunately, is a road that is not really suitable for traffic. It is still a very country road, and since 1994, I've been advocating that the road needs to be upgraded. What I've been telling them all along and what I thought we had been promised, that, that Appen Road will have dual carriageways mm. heading south and north. Mm. Now, when people talk to me about the trees, I often say to them, you know, you can plant another tree, but you can't plant another life. So. What we're asking the government to do is to please, not tomorrow, but yesterday, start the work and create two lanes north, two lanes south. Yes, by all means, keep the tree, but keep that avenue mm -hmm. as two lanes going one way or the other. Malcolm Turnbull, Mike Baird, how many more deaths is it going to take 
before you can do something about Appen Road. If you really, really care about the MacArthur community, like you say you do, do something to fix Appen Road now before it claims another life needlessly. Shout, shout, shout it! Shout it, shout it! A special shout out today for the children from Widgets Preschool, Warby Street, for brightening neighbors Easter by dropping off lovely handmade Easter cards in all their letter boxes. And a definite shout out to Tim's Gardens, Blue Pig and Blue Pig's proud new owners, Fleet, Kellett and Wagner Chartered Accountants for helping raise $2,400 for Beyond Blue. Well done. Shout, shout, shout it! Shout it, shout it! Action! It has been billed as the movie the devil doesn't want you to see. Pia Cruz has just completed her first feature film, The Rock. It's about a rock that talks, because it's based on a Bible verse in Luke 19. Jesus once told the Pharisees, the very rocks would cry out if men ceased to praise him. So behold, what would be so unusual with a talking rock? I'm interested in making Christian films in particular, and this one is primarily encouraging the church to tell people about Jesus. You should tidy your room sometime. Oh. Why do you keep following me? I speak because you are silent. I don't need to tell people about Jesus. You're not serious, are you? Actually, I found Cleveland online. I had like a basic outline and I just said, fill it in any way you like. Talk to my teacher and a bulldog about Jesus. You don't care if they end up in hell? That's where they came from. Fine. Sir? Yes? Um, have a good day. I don't need your Jesus, you stupid kid! I would love to be able to pay the actors. <laughs> Number one, I would love to be able to... I'd love to be able to make films full time and I would love to also be able to have enough money for the next one, which is definitely going to be more expensive. <laughs> Don't say anything wrong with just wanting to know if your friends believe in Jesus. So, you are really weird. Jesus is real. He wants to save you all from hell. All you have to do is give your heart to him and believe in him. The dinosaur film is probably looking more at um, recent discoveries that show dinosaurs couldn't have died 65 million years ago. You know, whether it's dinosaur blood, soft tissue stuff that says it was pretty recent. So all the evolution stuff is really dodgy. I have a feeling there's a very crazy person at the end of this pen. Which end? Oh! Watch the movie. <laughs> and that's all we have time for today, Brian. Well, if there's anyone out there you know who deserves a shout out, any stories that you know need to be told, happenings you want covered, issues of community concern, and any little ones doing great big things, flick us an email at info at thewizardofozfunland.com or call 4626-7777. Remember, no story is too small to be told if it makes a difference to our community. Have, Have a great, great fortnight! fortnight.